Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with this month's DevOps meetup. Uh, sponsored again by Intellitech. For those of you who are non Intellitechies. Um, we're based in Spokane, Washington. We do uh, software solution architecture, software design, and a lot of DevOps uh, related to that strategy to from strategy to implementation um, and whatever else. Uh, we're also passionate about learning, so we uh, sponsor this meetup as well as Python, uh, Python meetup, and the occasional DevOps meetup. I'm sure, uh, sorry, .NET meetup. I'm sure we'll have another one at some point, maybe covering uh, .NET 8. <clears throat> we'll see. I'm sure it'll happen. Uh, you can follow us on the on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay, I'm I'm Phil. Uh, nobody stepped up to volunteer, and I haven't volunteered anybody to present. So you're stuck with me again. Um, <clears throat> but we do have uh, in the coming year, we do have a couple of other topics that we're going to try and revisit. Um, having said that, the topic of deployment, um, even just in GitHub, is a fairly hefty topic. Um, there's there's a lot to it. There's a lot of components. There's a lot of building blocks. Um, uh, in session one, I ripped through a whole bunch of stuff, trying to get a baseline going so that we could move on to the fun stuff. Um, we covered what a release is, what a deployment is. There's different you know definitions and the different products. Um, what releases, um, you know, DevOps and GitHub. Um, we talked a bit about branching. I want to revisit that a little bit because it's a, a fairly important topic, not too much. Um, we talked a little bit about our artifacts and then some uh, options for deploying to environments. So today, uh, what I'd like to do is slow down a little, uh, take a breath or two in the next hour. Um, and start to get into some of these topics that are related to deploy deployment, specifically in GitHub. I'm, I'm leaving um, Azure DevOps alone for a while. If that's a, if that's something we we do want to do um, or get into um, in DevOps, what some of the building blocks are, what some of the best practices are, how they might differ. Uh, they're not a lot different, but they are different from GitHub. Um, we can do that again. We have um, teams across the projects. Um, I mean, John, you've had fun doing both at the same time, I think, uh, DevOps and GitHub, that is. Um, Mitch, you're uh, DevOps, right? You're yeah. exclusively DevOps. Yeah. Um, so that we still do a lot of Azure DevOps for, for various reasons. Um, uh, and again, that, that product isn't dead or even done. They are still making updates to the, to the product, uh, Azure DevOps. Even though Microsoft now has two, you know, DevOps tools, GitHub, wholly owned subsidiary, and Azure DevOps. Um, okay, so anyway, we'll talk about a little bit about branch protections, um, securing an environment with OpenID, Connect, which I think we've done a session on that. So I'm not going to go into too much depth. Um, assume that just assume that there's a little bit of at least familiarity with it. Um, start to do some deployments to dev and test environments. Um, review some of our Building blocks um, against what we what we have currently implemented, or what I'm going to show today anyway, or what we're going to walk through today. Um, we may use GitHub release to trigger deployment, um, and then again revisit some of our challenges. So that's sort of the the topic and the agenda for today. Uh, so far, so good. Makes sense. So we, again, we cruised through this pretty quickly the last time. Um, uh, we talked about Git flow, and really we're we're leaving that behind. Um, there are going to be cases where um, maybe it's useful, but they're going to be more complex, more larger deployments, bigger teams, et cetera, where where those things are going to be useful. Um, just uh, get using GitHub flow, which is a fairly simple process. We have a main default branch, um, and then off of that we build feature branches. Uh, these these could be bug fixes as well, or or something else, but uh, we just have one level, one level over default branch and feature branches. Um, we create feature branches from main um, or our default branch. Uh, we create a pull request when we're ready to submit the, submit um, or commit our updates. Um, we protect main, right? So we don't want 
randos, um, aka me, you know, uh, pushing into Maine without some protection. Um, and we delete branch after merge. I just I feel like compelled to say that because I keep running into repos where there's hundreds of branches that nobody ever deletes. It's just a, a pointer, and it's really not that big of a deal to have it. But you know, when you open up a list of branches and the list is longer than the page, it's probably a good sign that you have too many branches. Um, but anyway, that's a little not really relevant to the topic. Um, and you'll see that you know some of the demos today I haven't really deleted my branches, so. <laughs> Wanted to keep them around, keep them around for a little bit. Um, okay, so this is the basic process. I think everybody's familiar with this. Um, the the you know one deployment approach here is we take main and every time we push the main that triggers a deployment to dev, which leads to a deployment into a test environment, which leads to deployment into a production environment. There can be more environments. There could be less environments. Um, we have a, a project going on right now. It's early days. We only have one environment. That's all we need. I mean, we're going to need more environments, yes, but right now we only do one. So we only deploy to one. Um, so that, that's variable. And how you get from dev to test to prod also is variable. And that, that's some of the challenges that we face, um, especially in GitHub, is controlling that deployment. There's another approach, which we we visited a little bit the last uh, in the last session. Uh, that's really primarily used for, at least in Git, Git, uh, GitHub land, it's primarily used for libraries, you know, open source uh, repos that um, are, you know, building a tool or a utility where uh, a GitHub release is created and that tag triggers a deployment, whatever that deployment happens happens to mean. Um, the you know there's there's some interesting challenges with this. I mean you know if you look at this and say yeah great that's perfect I, I'll never have to worry about anything with this. It just solves all my problems, right? So sure, right? Easy. I mean can you think of some some issues like there, are there some obvious issues with with this approach? Might not want to go to prod immediately. Might not want to go to prod immediately. Have like a release date. So scheduled releases, for example. Any other issues? The, uh, I, nobody, if you're going directly to prod, then what's the point of test? Nobody's testing? Sure. Um, you know, there might not be a point to test. When do you tag is always an interesting question, I think. Like, what what you tag? Yeah. That's sort of leading to one of the one of the challenges here. And you know, the, the point here is if I want um you know, if I want all three of my features or this other, whatever this fourth feature is, you know, dot, 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 more and more stuff. If I want all this stuff in, in prod, I'm good, right? Yeah. yeah. But what if I want feature two and I don't want feature three and I don't want this stuff? The danger with this is, you know, the you quickly need additional building blocks or additional support or additional tools and techniques around this to make sure you have a quality release or that you can schedule or time your release. You know, the, 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 quite often for our clients, there's manual interventions, right? I, go, I deploy to a test environment. I don't want to go, to go any further. I want to wait there and let somebody look at it, right? So a human will go in, look at it, run some tests, verify that the features are as expected, you know, do a review with stakeholders, something like that you want to you want to do that in test environment sometimes that happens in the dev environment the obvious danger with dev is hey i'm i'm dealing with feature three and then you know some knucklehead goes and adds something else um to this to place the dev and maybe that screws up feature three so we like the so this is nice it's simple if you can get away with it do it because you know it's the simplest thing that works but there's additional things that that are required. You know, not I'm not going to really talk about them today. But there, are, for example, feature flags is a is a common thing, right? So feature flags can help us, you know, assume people are uh, assuming people are doing things correctly with controlling the flow. Um, you know, another thing that can control flow here is again manual uh, manual gates uh, to go from dev to test and from test to prod. What we don't like about manual, what we don't like about manual gates is well, they're manual. So I need a human to go in and you know push me from uh, to get me to get a push from from point A to point B. But you know that's 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 okay. That's fairly common. We shouldn't 
complain too much about it, but ultimately our goal is to refine our processes, to automate our processes such that we don't need that, that uh, human, uh, human intervention. And again, I'm sure we're all familiar with, uh, you know, GitHub itself, um, Azure DevOps, the product, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, et cetera, these are, are systems that are automatically, continuously deploying. That isn't to say they're not doing manual testing. They're continually deploying into uh, perhaps a sandbox environment or a canary environment. Like, so a canary might be, you know, the canary in the coal mine. I, I said this to somebody recently, I don't know who it was. If it was all of you all, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat, repeat <laughs> myself. Um, like my mother-in-law, I'm going to repeat the stories over and over again. I've heard this one already. Um, uh, but the you know the point being that you know prod might be my initial deployment, and um, you know it might be I might be dog fooding it, or I might have a special beta customer that you know knows hey this might be a, a sketchy environment, but I'm willing to help you help you validate it, mm -hmm. um, uh, and you know I'm testing it there before it actually gets rolled out to the to the rest of the rest of the environment. So I'm in prod, but I'm really in a test a test area of of prod. So you know that there there can be gray areas to this. You know the Azure DevOps team, for example, the team that builds uh, DevOps, their canary is their production system. So um, you know what's interesting about that, you know there's a whole I've got a whole two hour presentation just on on all the elements that go into making sure that that doesn't, you know, that they can still be productive while their, you know, their primary, you know, canary environment is what they all build the product on, you know, it's like the ultimate in dog fooding, you know, it's it's not just, oh yeah, deploy it and hope it works. No, I mean, there, there's a lot of process involved in making sure that that, that, that gets, um, that that's quality and everybody knows, you know, every developer on the team knows, you know, if they screw it up, they're bringing the whole, the whole team down. You know, 700, 800, you know, whatever, however many people it is, right? Yeah. So that's not the only thing, but it's a critical thing, right? You're, you're more serious about what you're doing when you know that at the end of, you know, you're not throwing it over the wall. This is not throwing it over the wall. You're like, okay, I, it, this is me who's, who's doing this, right? And we always talk about trying to avoid throwing it over the wall. All right, so a little bit of a diversion, but, you know, the, the, the key, not really, because the key point here is, um, you know, this is nice. This is, but doing this is just a simple starter, and your your scenarios are probably going to be more complex. So you need additional components, tools. Uh, you know, what I keep thinking of is building blocks. You know, I get this thing, I get this thing, I get this thing, and I got to build. You know, build my DevOps with uh, my my DevOps pipelines and my my healthy production pipeline, not with just one thing, but a bunch of things. So anyway. You know, the other option here, which solves a little bit of the problem and has uh, has, has some nice uh, benefits to it in GitHub is I can create a release and trigger a deployment from release. So, for example, if I want feature two, but not feature three, I can go in and grab this, create a release and then trigger a deployment. Now, what's typically going to happen in that scenario is I'm actually going to deploy into my test environment. I'm going to leave Dev as my integration environment. So the nice thing about this is, uh, as long as things are serial, uh, you know, my releases are serial, I can create a release there, I can cre create a release here, I can create a release here, and I can control what I uh, what flows into tests. So that's kind of nice. It's a, a benefit of creating releases. In addition, you know, GitHub releases, I, we looked at it last time, we can take a, another brief look at it. But you know, it basically can generate release notes for you, um, and nice, nice for each side of release notes. If you do that, what, then you have to go back and get dev up to speed with what you've released. So what's happening with dev is, and, and again, I, I highly recommend that that this doesn't ever change. And I don't know that we do projects that that are like this. If I push into my main branch, it's the point. Oh, it's in. It, okay. Yeah. So the uh, but you point out an issue, right? Because when I trigger this, you know, these other two releases are already in dev. So test and dev don't match. Right. So now we've got an issue. All right. I got to fix a bug. How am I going to fix it? Right. And then you start to get into some of the other the other branching branching approaches. Right. The ideal is, all right, well, let's let test take everything and always roll forward. 
Um, and then again, I implement something like feature flag. So it can, if I don't want feature three or this other feature, I can turn them off um, and just focus on feature two and leave the code in there. I think that's a, that's a preferred way to go. Right. right? Okay. Now, certainly something that you know a lot of a lot of uh, products implement. There's a lot of tooling that's out there that supports feature flags. So you know, it's it's something we see all the time, right? Yeah. It, it was kind of interesting when you said, you know, the knucklehead scenario where they did something to break feature three. I feel like the benefit of doing the continuous integration of that code into the dev and all of that is that your code's only as good if it works together. And so the longer you keep those things separated, mm -hmm. the more chance you have for something to go wrong and for someone to not know what the thing is that caused the issue. Yeah. Right? So like I almost see that as not an issue so much that somebody can merge something in to break feature three. But more of, you know, that's a benefit that we can figure out that feature three broke early. Yeah. And then I guess, yeah, automated testing. How do you make sure that we have a good enough testing structure in place to make sure that each of those environments is protected along the way? And how can we expedite that as right. best as possible? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'm curious about the next model we have, though. Um, well, I'm only covering this today. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm excited for the next session. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to, you know, again, try to fit it into, you know, you know, it's we're already 17 minutes into this, so you know, I keep talking, time keep ticking. It's not, it's not, it's not, <laughs> um, but that's okay. But I, you know, again, there, there's at least one other model that um, that we we implement fairly frequently, and variations on this theme, right? Where you'd say, hey, I've got a default, but now I've got release branches. And the Azure DevOps team, what they do is they'll they'll continuously push. But then when they're ready to release, they'll grab a release branch. What that release branch does is it gives them an opportunity to do bug fixes, and then they merge down into their default branch, whatever bug fixes they make and release, and they don't have to worry about you know the hundreds of people who are pushing into uh, into main on a regular basis. So um, you know there's dozens. I don't know how many the number is. Dozens, maybe hundreds of, of pushes into main a day um, yeah. um, in their in their scenario. Um, okay, so the the really a key point or a key starting point to this uh, is the pull request, right? So this is really the first time um, we, we've protected the main branch. We do a pull request to uh, to merge code into main, and we want to make sure that we set up the pull request so that there's approvals. You know, somebody else is taking a look at this code. Um, we facilitate discussions, right? So we, you know, we have uh, somebody who's taking the job of reviewing this, uh, the pull request seriously and giving feedback uh, where needed. With GitHub, we have the option of code owners. So I can do something like if it's uh, on the security branch, um, I'll have, you know, the, the one member of the team review it. If it's on the build branch, maybe I'll have the dev, the person who's focused on DevOps uh, reviewing it to make sure that you know the, the DevOps pipelines aren't getting screwed up. I can also put in a number of reviewers. I can put in status checks. We'll take a, a quick look at that. Code analysis, unit tests, linters. Um, the key point is this is done by the engineering team. In other words, GitHub users. Um, so the the point. Uh, the point being that you know other stakeholders aren't involved in this process. This is just you know done by the engineering team. I've got a GitHub license. I'm a GitHub user. So if we just take uh, take a brief pause, I have uh, to look at some actual stuff as opposed to PowerPoint slides. We've um, Grant and myself uh, uh, have uh, primarily Grant has done all the the web stuff. So if you if you think this is ugly, blame Grant. <laughs> um, the um, we we've built a, a site and a whole bunch of stuff behind this to for our uh, the class we're teaching at Eastern. So we're teaching a DevOps cloud DevOps class at Eastern, and this is a, a an Azure static website, um, which displays the joke of uh, displays the joke of a day joke of the day. Um, so if I come back anytime during the day today to this site, I'm going to get the same joke. Um, you know, why did web, I don't know, whatever. Some of these I don't even, I don't even get. Um, I think that's, uh, somebody's gonna have to tell me. I don't even know what that is. That's, that's unfortunate. I don't understand the joke of the day. Um, <laughs> but I can also get a random joke. These are, these jokes are coming out of a Cosmos DB. Random joke, come on. Um, 
uh, off the hook. So React, reactive programming, you got hooks and hooks and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's pretty funny. Ha ha. Um, <laughs> and then I can get a new joke. Um, I think I have some jokes in here, but maybe Grant deleted all my jokes because my jokes really are not funny. Um, C sharp developer of self because he can like Java. All right. So yeah, that's that's hysterical. Um, <laughs> we also have a, a flow here where we can submit jokes, which goes through various other uh, other stuff. The point here is that hey, we've got a we've got a site we're deploying. Um, this is sort of our, our sample scenario. If I go to my repo, let's take a look at what we have set up. So um, right now, I just have my main branch, which is my default. And again, I have some uh, branches that I've already merged, but I've left around for, for demo purposes. Um, if I go to deploy to test, um, I believe this workflow has a, this is the simple workflow we looked at the last time. I've cleaned it up a little bit, so I want to make sure. Uh, nope, this is not the right one. Um, uh, let's try that one. Yeah, deploy. Okay. So this is a very simple deployment starter deployment workflow Again, we took a look at it the last time this is a github action i'm assuming there's some familiarity with github actions that are very similar to the yaml yaml pipelines and azure devops there are some pretty significant differences but again, i think I, I talked about it in another session so i'm not gonna not going to worry about it today um but this on on push to branch um also a workflow dispatch which means i can manually execute it um, I have the uh, I can set an environment variable. I have different jobs, so uh, each job will run on a different in a different instance of a GitHub runner. So these jobs could run in parallel. They could run in sequence. Um, I have these in, in in sequence. So I've got a dev, a test, and a prod job. Um, each job doesn't do much. In this case, it's um, I run a little bit of uh, PowerShell to display the value of a secret, an environment secret. Don't do this. It's a pretty simple workaround to having secrets display, but um, or getting secrets to display. Just to illustrate the point and make sure I had things set up correctly. Um, I'm actually using PowerShell in this case. So I'm setting the shell to PowerShell. And then in test, I'm just echoing um, and we'll see what that does. Um, I have it depends on up here or needs. So needs deploy dev. So this forces this to go in sequence. If I didn't have the, the needs there, dev and the deploy dev job and the deploy test job would run in parallel, uh, more or less. And then on prod, I have needs deploy test. Um, I could also do something like needs deploy test. I'm not, I'm not gonna add to this, but I could specify that deploy prod needs both test and dev, which if I ran those in parallel, I could um, flow them back, flow them back together. So it's kind of nice. Um, if I run this, uh, we'll see a uh, a um, a flow. I'm not going to bother running it because it's just going to take a few minutes, and you know, trust me, it works. But if I go to deploy the deploy job, and we scroll down, I don't know, somewhere down here, um, you know, I get deploy to dev, um, and I'm going to see, you know. Uh, my deployment values. Actually, this is an early one where I was actually dumping all, all all the environment variables, which can be a handy thing to try and figure out what that's actually going on and why your stuff doesn't work. Um, if I go to deploy test, I just I'm just doing an echo and GitHub Actions knows, hey, that's a secret. I'm not displaying it to you, so you get uh, asterisks on the same thing in in, uh, in prod. So that's fairly simple. Um, so again, without just on its own, there is really much protection there, right? If I just deploy to main, I'm going to deploy deploy across my pipeline. So there's nothing inherent. There's nothing inherent in the my deployment pipeline that's going to protect me. But if I protect my branch, so if we go to um, settings and I go to rule sets because we don't use branch protections anymore. We just use rule sets um, until proven that they don't actually do what I think they do. So I go to rules, I go to a rule set, and I have this disabled for the moment. But if I enable it, I am now going to get um, 
uh, if I make it active, I'm now going to get uh, these protection rules in place. You know, who can bypass? I don't have anybody bypassing. I'm targeting the default branch, aka main in this case. I could name it as main if I had a different default branch, so I can do that. You know, I can add multiple targets here if I want. And then I can do things like restrict updates. You know, nobody can push to it um, directly, restrict deletions, require require a pull request, and then I can have additional settings here, you know, things that we've, we've looked at before. Um, and then I can also require additional status checks. Now, in this particular scenario, I don't have additional status checks, but I do have a, a, a code uh, a code scan. So if I save those changes, um, uh, somebody remind me to turn this off because that's really, it may, uh, actually, I think I'm going to leave it on. Paul Warren Grant. So he's he's going to be teaching on this repo this afternoon. So, um, uh, okay. So we we get the basic idea. We've got the pull request. These are things we're all familiar with. Um, from a deployment perspective, it's it's a key component of protecting uh, protecting my environment. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, so what I want to do is just quickly. Let's quickly uh, mess with uh, with code here and see what happens. Um, so it's really an aggressive uh, resolution there. Hopefully that's that's still okay with everybody. Um, okay. So I am in VS Code. I'm currently on the main branch. This is the code for the joke app. It's a Nuxt. Uh, Nuxt, which is a helper. I don't know if you guys know what Nuxt is, but it's a wrapper for Vue. Um, that's standard, uh, standard um, app generation stuff. Um, that's what it is. I'm going to go into, let's say I'll go into ooh, pages, and I'll go to the index, and I'll say, uh, let's change the title. Um, where is the title? Oh, I've changed it multiple times and I still can't find it. Um, so let's say, hey, I don't need, I, don't, I just need joke of the day. I don't need website in the title. So pretty, pretty trivial change. I'll go in and I'll say, hey, change the, change the title. Uh, we'll commit that and we'll push it. And that's, fail. I protected the branch, can't do that. Got a pull. All right. So, if you know the, the right way to do this would be, hey, let's create an issue for that, um, and I'm going to do it so quickly that you'll think, why wouldn't I? Why would I not always do this? Uh, fix the title. Um, uh, do it because nobody wants to watch me type. We'll submit a new issue, and I will say, create a branch. Which is a nice feature of yeah, that. Nice. Say check out locally, and because the resolution is so horrible, I'm not getting the uh, I'm not getting the the checkout stuff. But that's okay. So I'm going to create a branch for this issue. Check out locally. Um, oh boy. Well, that's nasty. <laughs> Can't get to the select. I did try all this stuff, but not at this resolution. Oh my God! Can you zoom out on your browser? Let's see if that. There you go. <laughs> Check out locally. So I'm going to create the branch. Uh, the key thing was creating the branch. This this text we don't really care about, but it will save ourselves a minute or two. Um, so I'm going to get touch origin. Actually, just let me make sure that I get that to a poll first. Try them up to date, and then. Check out the title, so I don't have to type it in. All right, so now we will go to uh, back to that. Say, fix the title again. Uh, fix title. Now I'll push. Okay, so I go back to my repo. Right, I go to code and I get the little helper there that, hey man, you just push, do you want to pull this? Sure. Fix the title and this fixes, fixes uh, 17. 
did the thing. Fix the 17. Of course, this is a good example of a bad pull request description. Um, you know, it, it really is a key part of it, right? It, it's not technical at all. It's just process and, and thinking about what you do. Write a good description so that the reviewer, you know, start the, start your reviewer off in a good mood, right? <laughs> give, them, give them some good, give them, you know, he or she, give them some good information to, to chew on. You look nice today. Did yes. the things, please review. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> no, that's not quite what I had. You, you know, I should have done all that chatter after creating a pull request because another thing that I've done in this repo is, uh, well, now I have to have a review. Uh, I'm wondering if I can review it. Um, Mitch, I think you're. I think I got an email for it. Yeah. So, John, I need your, need your, uh, your idea again. Um, I guess I don't. Can you assign yourself down there in the signees? I don't think I can. Re I can approve it by default, uh, but I'm going to try. Um, I'll try in a second, although uh, Mitch, I'm assuming you can you can get there quicker than I can. So um, the other thing to note in the meantime, I added a security scan to this repo as well. <clears throat> and by default, that's that's going to run as part of the pull request. So I'm starting to see um, some of the status checks, at least some initial status checks. I want to know that. I didn't write any, I didn't introduce any uh, security vulnerabilities. This also does some uh, style checking as well. So it goes beyond just um, security checking. So I might get some of that too, but if uh, this, this would be one status check of a few, uh, maybe several, uh, you want to be careful with these things because they are running for every, um, uh, for every check. Um, that's weird. No, nope. all right, we're all good. It just took a minute to uh, update. So I ran all the checks for security um, and code scanning. So now I just need a review and approval and I will, um, I'll be able to get. Um, There's the approved button. Uh, da, 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 you should have. Uh, so you're looking. Do I not have rights to approve in this? You should. Fascinating. I tried. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Another open review. Huh. I don't think this is going to make a difference. Fascinating. You know, it doesn't surprise me that I can't change it. Um, no, I didn't got it. Did you get it? Yeah, it popped up. There's a banner that I wasn't expecting to be there. But I should have said approved. All right, so let's go back to the fixed title PR. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, uh, Modify my, go back to my settings. Random button clicks. Uh, go back to my check and say that. Settings so restrict all. 
Back my pull request, go back to fix title. And now I can merge. So <clears throat> random random checks from Phil earlier today. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and confirm the merge. And then uh, so we're now going to push in a main. So what that's going to trigger is uh, some other actions. Um, let me just double check where I'm at. So we did a status check. We took a quick look at code analysis. Again, typically we would add unit tests in here, and then if there's linting to be done, right? So I want to check style and make sure that I'm following, I'm conforming to whatever guidelines, <clears throat> and I'm informing, informing my reviewer as much as possible on, on what the what the code looks like, right? So mm -hmm. at least I've got a, a reasonable uh, style check uh, going on there. So <clears throat> we we talked a little bit about environments. Let's take a look at um, some environment settings. So if I go into my environments, I have dev test and prod, which were which we looked at um, just a few minutes ago uh, with we uh, deployment, and then I can configure different things in dev. Uh, I can also have required reviews here. So this is where I get the manual the that manual check uh, on an environment. You know, am I okay to um, to deploy into this environment, right? Uh, and I can add a bunch of people, and I can prevent myself from from approving you know, approving the review. What's interesting, this is uh, again beta, somewhat somewhat recent, is uh, we can also have custom rules. Um, there are some existing apps. Uh, I'll just pop over there real quick uh, because I can do things like um, if I have data dog monitoring, honeycomb, or the infamous uh, uh, service now integration, right? So mm -hmm. I don't want to deploy into this environment until I get an approved change request, for example, from GitHub. And then I can implement all kinds of sophisticated non stakeholder or non developer view reviews and ch change request flows um outside of github so this is an interesting way to do it if you're willing to uh implement service now god help you i didn't say that <laughs> i have to edit that out of the recording um but there's also other things like uh century you know if there's um security security vul vulnerabilities it other issues with the environment um you know again health is always a little bit uh, tricky one for me because i may be deploying an uh, a fix that to the health of my system that Datadog or or New Relic or whatever is has warned me about. You know, like New Relic is a good one for it. You're getting a lot of exceptions. Well, I just fixed the exception. Let me, you know, deploy into the environment. So you got to be a little bit careful with what you know what, what you're actually going to use here, uh, use those for here. Um, okay, so let's go back to environments, uh, navigate back to that dialogue. Um, what's interesting about this, though, is you can create your own uh, protection rules, and that's something I, I you know, I, I think that can help to, to eliminate some of the advantages, like ServiceNow. I can do some of the things that ServiceNow wants to do without having to implement ServiceNow if I'm willing to implement some custom code um, and, uh, and an action, which is, it really isn't very hard to, to do that. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward uh, to create an app. You know, the, the question is, what's that back end look like? But uh, again, that's not necessarily today's topic, so I'm going to keep moving. Mm -hmm. He says, as it's already 1239. Man, I trimmed content. I swear to God, I trimmed <laughs> content. How does this happen? <clears throat> Trim more. Cut more. Keep cutting. <laughs> um, so we have these environment secrets that are specific to, to the deployment environment, which may come in handy. I think the other thing that uh, to keep in mind is for, for these actions, which we're going to take a look at in a minute, I also have repo level secrets. So um, I'm going to be using OpenID Connect. So with OpenID Connect, I need to reference a identity. In this case, I'm using Azure Identity um, or Enter ID, Azure ID, Enter ID, whatever. Um, so I have a, a client ID, which subscription am I targeting? Because uh, that ID is going to have to be uh, provisioned um, or given rights to the subscription where it's going to deploy, and then a tenant ID, which Azure AD instance am I, am I getting my identity out of? Um, there's also uh, 
Azure Static Web Apps by default will give you a key. That key is you know something you have to copy out of, you know, copy out of the deployment, paste into your repository secret, and I hope it never changes or be ready to update it when it does change. And then you know, if you have multiple environments, now I'm changing it per environment. I am on a passwordless kick uh, the last few years, and I think whenever we can do passwordless, we want to do passwordless. So let's see what actually happened to my push into main. Of course, my deployment failed. Um, let's see how it failed before I say, aha, yes, it did exactly what I expected it to do. <laughs> Shocking is all get out. So, you know, this is very similar to, I mean, you may, may have done that a little bit too quickly. So I have a dev, test, and prod environments. Um, I've renamed my steps a little bit, but that, that's where the where my deployments are going. Uh, looks like dev worked, test failed. We never got to prod because prod depends on test and test failed. So we didn't even didn't even uh, go there. Is that a test that failed or the deploy fail? The deploy fail. The deploy to test failed. Okay. Uh, so when I say test failed, I mean the environment test failed. Uh, I don't have any unit tests. That's a, uh, again next session. We'll start to add unit tests and more status checks and you know build out um, a robust uh, flow for our joke uh, site, which is going to take over the world. Uh, it's going to go viral any day, <laughs> very soon now. I'm sure. Quality that. jokes, yeah. Thanks. Quality jokes. We got to be ready for this to scale. You know, that's why we built it on Cosmos DB. So, global scale. We can deliver jokes around the globe uh, with you know millisecond uh, response time. All right. So the what I've done here, I uh, did the classic checkout. I now log into Azure. I get the app key for the site, and I build and deploy it. All right. So that's effectively what I'm go, what I'm doing here. We'll take a look at the, the actual workflow in a second. If I go to test, you know, illustrating that my environment is protected, I'm basically get a, getting a message that says uh, the federated identity you gave me doesn't match. So I'm not going to allow you to log into Azure. Okay. So if I go to, did I leave the registration up? Probably not. If I go to yeah, I did leave it up. So if I go to the federated credentials, and I, again, I'm not going to fix this in the interest of time, um, but I could easily fix it, right? So the my app registration actually is deploying three different things. Um, you know, you may decide, hey, man, I want one credential per thing, or I want one credential for 20 things. Is if I'm deploying 20 things, do I want 40, 20 credentials? Probably not. So you you know you have options with these federated credentials about you want to. How you how you are able to deploy this? So uh, the credential or the, the federated credential that's working for me is from this joke repository into an environment called Dev. You're good to go. So as long as your environment is Dev, I'm going to let you use this credential and I'm going to let you log in. Um, now, if I haven't provisioned the credential correctly to the Subscription, it still might fail, um, but I've happened. You know, again, I cheated. Um, <laughs> that, and over time, we'll you know make this uh, make this real uh, or more real, um, as much as a joke app can be real. Um, the the credential actually has contributor access to the subscription, so anything that lives in that subscription is going to be able to deploy to. So it just you know saves saves something. But I wanted to illustrate that hey, I don't have a credential that says I can deploy into the test environment. It's going to fail, so I can say, you know, dev and test. Well, I don't really care, so I'll uh, I'll add a credential for that, but I'm not going to allow you to use that credential to deploy to prod, right? So mm -hmm. prod might be a completely different subscription. Again, that's a general guideline that we we think about these days. Even though I could deploy prod into the same subscription as dev and test and different resource groups, ideally to scope the the resources. Good practice, especially if you're going to be audited, is to split the split the environment. So deploy dev and test and a dev and test subscription, deploy your prod into product uh, uh, production subscription. Okay, so again, this goes quite a long ways to really locking down your deployment environment. You know, it's going to be tough to defeat this. Um, you're separating the concern. Whoever has control over uh, Enter ID, aka Azure ID. Um, can determine how to deploy these things or as control to the environments can determine where these these things get uh, get deployed. The only reason I can do this is that 
I'm controlling the whole environment, right? But under normal circumstances, as a dev on a team, I'm not going to have, uh, I may or may not have this sort of access. I may have it on dev and test, but I, I, I shouldn't have it on broad, you know, again, in a, a normal scenario. There's plenty of scenarios where that isn't the case, obviously. Okay, so that um, it really takes us through a, a significant portion of uh, what we're trying to cover here, right? So I have different ways that can protect the environment. I have protected branches that are, uh, and I, I'm saying you cannot deploy into this branch unless you are deploying from a protected branch, right? So, um, you know, again, how I protect the branch, that's another issue, but it's, you know, again, all these building blocks sort of depend on each other. If I take one away, the, the house comes crashing down. Um, you know, so maybe it's more like uh, what's that game where you, you pull the sticks out? Jenga. Jenga. Yeah, it's, uh, Jenga is probably not the right paradigm here. So <laughs> not what we want to think about. So Open ID Connect. That's that uh, using that app regist registration, um, and then um, you know I know I have I, I know that test has to work before I get to prod. What I really want to be able to do with test is at least run an integration test. You know, some sort of um, integration test, right? We think about the testing pyramid or, you know, different testing unit. Uh, it's just testing business logic and it's not e exercising your system beyond that individual layer. And it can be done at build time, right? So I can do that in the PR. I don't need an environment. I don't need to deploy it anywhere to run my unit test. The integration test, I need to actually deploy it somewhere because I'm going to be integrating two components. They have to, they have to be living somewhere so you know ultimately what i want to do is add to the, the test environment and probably the dev, dev environment as well some integration testing it might be api testing you know do my apis work it might be hitting the front end website that's a classic one that i do just as a, a demo i'll just you know i uh, hit uh, curl the site do i get a response back am i getting the text you know some text back and you know, scan you know regex the the result if i'm in bash land or you know, uh, using PowerShell, you can do the same thing, right? Invoke uh, invoke request and get the HTTP back, HTML back. It does it have what I want in it, or is it an error code, right? You know, not authorized or something. You know, the, sort of the classics. Right? And I can. That's a real simple integration test, but I know my my deployment worked when that when that happens. That would cut would have come in handy, real handy today, um, because static web apps has an occasional issue where the certificates will fail. And both my dev and test environments have been hit by that issue too. So I've got to do some screwing around to get them to work. But it doesn't matter. It's you know anyway. It's but but again, if I if I had that signal in place, mm -hmm. I would have noticed you know two hours ago that my or three hours ago whatever that my deployment was failing as opposed to you know thirty minutes ago, so yeah, forty five minutes ago whatever. Um. Um, you know, microcosm of uh, what the, the, you know, it's a good case study or a good scenario, right? This stuff happens. And, you know, even though 99 times the, the, your simple ping check or integration test is going to work, there's always that one time. Yeah. And then ideally that's just your starting point, right? You want to hit all of your, you know, all of your API endpoints and so on and so forth with, with tests. Yeah, I had another example of that where, so we're working in a mono repo, so we have multiple applications that are getting deployed from the same code base. Yeah. And there was a shared package that got updated. And so the application someone was working on was fine and they checked that and it worked out great. But another application that relied on that package wasn't fine and we didn't have a check in place. So that application went down and we didn't know until yeah. somebody just stumbled into like, oh, this isn't running. Yeah. Um, so then the next step was to add those health checks, right? So we can consistently see like, at least we know you're working. And if we did cause an issue, we can tie it back quickly um, to, the, to the root cause. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's take a quick look at the the updated uh, deploy. There's really a couple of a couple of things here. Uh, another building block that I like. Um, let's look at a uh, let's say an earlier version of this. Um, this isn't the one that's running right now, but it's an earlier version. So we have a build and build and deploy job runs on Ubuntu. I specify the environment of. Um, I check out code and then I do my Azure login, right? So here's where I'm grabbing the secrets. And again, if they if I had a different uh, app registration per environment, I can set that set those secrets at the environment level. And they don't really need to be secrets. 
um, you know, best practices, um, you know, still hide these just to make them a little bit less discoverable. But, um, you know, there's really, you know, everybody knows what your tenant ID, everybody knows what your subscription ID, you know, maybe, and certainly your client ID, all right, maybe you protect that. Um, uh, and then what I do is I get the app key. So I'm now going to use uh, an AZ command to go grab the app key from the static web. Uh, web app, so I don't have to put it in as a secret. And if it changes, all right, fine, I'm I'm good with that. Um, I'm going to grab the most current one. Um, I use a little bit of uh, GitHub syntax to set a output variable for the step. And then there's similar stuff that you can do in Azure DevOps. So I set the key, and then I turn around and use the key. So steps uh, uh, for my job step app key output key so id app key that this the identity of this particular step uh, i want outputs and i want the key output right so you're gonna have multiple outputs uh, the repo token um, is just so that the this can enter the this task can interact with github i'm not really asking it to do that uh, but then the rest of this is just i'm um, doing a uh, a static web app deploy all right so that's all well and good but um, one thing about this, especially if I get to the point, uh, or when I get to the point of adding a step here to do integration tests, I'm starting to get three, four interesting things that I'm gonna need to execute for each environment. So what I like to do with these things is, is use a greater reusable workflow. So if I go to, go to deploy web, this is uh, a reusable workflow that's, this is actually what's ex executing now up on, uh, um, in GitHub. <clears throat> I have this trigger uh, of workflow call. I define a couple of parameters, a deploy environment and an app name. Um, I need to give this permissions so it can do the OIDC stuff because <clears throat> it actually updates the, the token in your, in your, the token that it's going to use to do the, the static site deployment um, as part of that logon. Um, and then um, I use uh, I do the I do the operations right. So I sign in, I get the app key, I do the build and deploy, all the same stuff that we just looked at. But I've also substituted the app name, so that's not hard coded anymore. And uh, same as before, I uh, drop the key in there. Then my deploy, which before was just a simple little. Um, a simple little you know echo i've now changed that to say uh use my reusable workflow and i can reference that um just with a, a path uh this uh is that showing up on your screen are you seeing that up there how long is my highlight not showing up that's weird it's like, looks like the screen is frozen never mind um hopefully it's uh Okay, everywhere else. Fascinating. In any event, <clears throat> um, the uh, yeah, the wireless display is frozen. Um, <clears throat> in any event, um, those uh, not in the office can see uh, ideally that I'm using. Um, this deploy web app I've just indexed into this local repo. If I have access to other other repos, I can uh, reference uh, reusable workflows in those other repos as well. Um, I then give it the parameters dev uh, as the environment and uh, the app name of Joe QI dev, and I say inherit secrets. So you can use all the secrets that that I that I have. I can also prevent that from occurring. Then I can pass the secrets in manually into the uh, into the environment. But since this is a local workflow, it doesn't it really seem to uh, overkill. Well, the nice thing about that is pretty simply, I can just add another test environment where I <clears throat> specify the, the deployment environment of test and an app name of test, but it's going to execute all the same, the same three steps. All right, so this works fine as long as all the steps are the same for each environment. And if they're different, then there's, there's uh, ways that you can um, uh, obviously handle that as well. And then deploy prod, I actually just left it as uh, uh, the old uh, the old demo um, since I haven't deployed a 
well, we actually have a prod site deployed, but um, uh, I didn't want to touch it just yet. Getting close. All right. So uh, another quick time check. Five-ish minutes. So we'll try and wrap this up real quickly. Um, so <clears throat> we got through um, some of the key things about environments. Um, what else would I add here? I, you know, I think we talked about it. Functional tests, other signals. You know, getting user feedback. You know, did, did their issues get fixed? Um, we want to gather the feedback from them. Are there other metrics that we would want want to get? Is the performance tests? Um, you know, perhaps there's other things that we would want to include in our checks to make sure that the um, the you know the dev or the test environment is healthy before we before we move on. Um, so if we review the pipeline again, uh, this is the, again just a, a a way to illustrate these environments and note what what things happen in, in each environment. So we're doing a CI on every PR, you know, continuous integration every time we we pull requests. We need to add unit tests, but I, you know that's a fairly well known known thing. Added a static code scan that's built into GitHub, uh, code QL. We had code reviewers um, eventually. Um, on the dev environment, every time I push the dev, I'm going to deploy, ideally run uh, integration tests, and I have opportunities to basically to gate the exit. I want to fail the deployment if my integration tests don't pass, which is going to not allow it to go to test. Um, in test, what I would want to do is potentially add security and penetration tests. Maybe I don't bother with dev, but I want dynamic uh, penetration testing. Do whatever end-to-end -end functional testing I think is necessary, whether it's manual or automated. Um, you know, again, we've done some sessions on Playwright, um, which is a you know state-of-the-art, as it were, from from Microsoft for doing uh, Selenium-style you know UI-type uh, functional tests and other on other things. Um, and then again, if that if those tests don't pass, I'm not going to prod. If those tests don't pass, I don't want to probably make, I, I don't want to make the environment available to testers to use either, right? So a failed deployment, um, uh, a failed deployment should fail the deployment. I shouldn't get a half back state, right? If that deployment doesn't work, I want to make sure that my, my test environment has uh, whatever, whatever was there. Um, that's a nice feature of Azure DevOps. So that's a, a challenge here. And then eventually we go to, to prod. Um, so a number of these building blocks we talked about, reusable workflow. I think really what's next is release information. Uh, again, we're not going to have time to talk about it today, but um, you know, a common thing that, that we saw the last time is, hey, I can create a release. So if I go into my code, I'm not sure where I left this. Um, I, I have a tag, but I don't have a release, but I can create a new release. Let's say if I create it on my v0.9 tag, um, I can generate release notes, which is really nice. Here's all the stuff that's changed. And then if I uh, publish this release, I can trigger my workflow to to run just like a uh, uh, pull request. All right. So typically, you know, this is a manual operation. Again, I'm a developer on the team, so that's um, the, the, the somebody on the team is responsible for doing that or takes the release management role and decides what what uh, commit do we want to release? Let's tag it with our version numbering standard and then um, go go deploy it. Uh, we have built deployments with GitHub Actions where we've automated the the tagging. So you know we we figure out what actually we want to tag based on some process and procedure. We'll go tag it and then uh, use that to trigger deployments of of code into into those environments. Okay, uh, wrapping up. Um, reusable, uh, you know, again, the OWASP uh, or some other penetration testing um, we have integrated in workflows in the past. That'd be a, a good one to, to integrate here as well. Um, we talked about creating releases. Um, and then this is another style. Um, I actually have a couple of others. Um, and again, if you log into the, are you seeing my, uh, yeah, yeah, as opposed to, to the overhead, yep. which is post. So this is another um, semi-popular um, uh, approach of, you know, rather than, you know, I, I sort of showed this mainline deployment well, but if you're doing releases, then it's sort of a hybrid between uh, between these models of 
uh, uh, development, you know, a branch for deployment. So here I've got development, which is probably my default branch. So that that setup is my default. I've got it protected. I'm deploying continuous, this continuously into my CI environment. Um, when I go to QA, I actually uh, pull um, uh, pull a branch uh, or pull uh, a commit from develop into test. Right, so I'm always pulling up the up the chain. Right, as soon as I trigger into test, I, de I trigger deployment into the test environment. Right, so the nice thing about this, and I do the same for prod. The nice thing about this is that the environment always matches this the uh, the branch. Right, so I can look at the branch. I know it's in in code because anytime I've pulled into it, it's it's deployed. Um, that gives me an opportunity if I wanted to. Again, there's there's downsides to to fixing stuff in test. Um, but I could, you know, patch test, have it deployed to to QA. Um, at that point, I'd also want to pull that down into Dev, so that my bug fix gets into my uh, development branch and I'm not leaving uh, uh, fixes behind. That's a manual process, which is the downside. So you you know you've got to have some some discipline or some processes to help you make sure that you don't miss bug fixes. Um, because again, the next time you you decide you want to release. If you didn't merge that fix in, it's gone, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, and again, uh, feature flag is a definite better alternative. Um, again, unfortunately, what I've seen happen sometimes, um, even with this flow, is um, you know, it shares some of those features, uh, some of those challenges of, well, I want this feature, but not that feature. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is a product owner going to the team and say, "Don't commit your changes because I don't want your stuff yet." Mm -hmm. Right? You never want to do that. I mean, if you, you you're speaking to that earlier, uh, right? We want minimize that. Always roll forward. Push your stuff in, mm -hmm. uh, which means again, you're you're probably back to feature flags as, as something we we want to do. Um, and I think that was it. So you know, we still are left with some challenges. I think there's there's a few things that uh, we can address here. Um, haven't necessarily seen the visibility, but we've got components of visibility where we can see what's actually going on with these releases. How do we know when a release is ready other than by automation? Um, and we still want to have some notifications that, hey, if somebody deployed it a test, you can go check it out now. And here's the stuff that's in it, right? Haven't really seen that. Um, who approves? How do we know who approves, right? So there's some process around that. And what sort of tools do we give these people to approve? Um, I think other stuff we've got. But again, some some more questions to answer in future sessions. Always more to do. Um, so are there other other open? You know, again, there's plenty of questions left. Other things, other topics um, for discussion or like, hey, how do you do this? Hey, how do you do that? Understanding it with three minutes over. There's a lot. It's a lot. It's still a lot, right? Can you have reviewers automatically be assigned? So when it says you create a pull request, you have the same reviewers every time? You can assign, you can specify groups. So yes, you can have uh, default reviewers. And again, there's also code owners in GitHub, which allow you to, you know, again, based on uh, the, the folder structure, you can have an automatic reviewer based on what code was changed by file, right? So this is good if you have like a mono repo, uh, across projects, right? If somebody who's a tech lead on this particular project, you want to make sure that they review every every request. You can put that into a code owner's file, so they're always on the review list. So there's a lot of options. There's a lot more options on pull requests than there are in environments. Environments you got like one shot at it, <laughs> um, which is again comparing and contrasting with Azure DevOps because they're they're gating um, uh, gating in um, for releases. Specifically, Azure DevOps releases, their gating is pretty sophisticated with regards to what you can do. You know, you can have six people and three people have to approve, or mm -hmm. you know, everybody in this group, only one person in this group. So there's there's some nice uh, workflow there. None of that exists in, in GitHub out of the gate. Again, there are uh, you know GitHub actions, thousands of GitHub actions, and some people have done you know have done some review uh, approval workflow. I think also what I'm looking at is that. Custom uh, that extended um, check in the environment that we looked at, you know, like service down, et cetera. That that's really the, the the pathway to pretty much the, the nice, a good pathway to whatever the heck you want to do, uh, you know, with regards to approvals or anything else. So, 
Um, all right. There was so, a question. Uh, yep, go ahead. There was a question online. Uh, are we going to share the slides in the recording afterwards to external external people? Yeah, I promise. Um, I actually edited one, but the our the person who's responsible has got a bit of a backlog right now, or who's newly responsible. <laughs> They just gave that responsibility. They're really happy about it, I'm sure. Um, so the recordings are coming, for sure. I'll figure out where to, to push slides if people just want the slides outside of um, the recording. They don't really have a spot for that. So uh, we'll come up with something. OK, thanks all. Appreciate your attendance and feedback and input. Okay, cool, thanks.